Mario Odyssey is the latest fully-fledged 3D platforming adventure for Nintendo's mustachioed mascot, and while the game never strays too far from the recipe that made older Mario games so delicious, there are plenty of ways in which Odyssey takes a wrench to the established formula. Here are seven ways Mario Odyssey is a different Mario game. Mario games rarely make much sense. I mean, if Lakitu is the one holding the camera in Mario 64, how are we seeing him here? Is there a second unit Lakitu or what? But while a series is consistently eccentric, each Mario game tends to have a theme that it adheres to fairly strictly. In Mario Sunshine, it was a tropical theme built around the sunny Isle Delfino. In Mario 64, all the action was based around Peach's castle, and in Mario Galaxy, you're in space, so everything is all spacey. <laughs> Odyssey's style, however, is harder to pin down than a greased-up Dave Bautista. For instance, it's tough to believe this neon, polygonal, food-themed world is part of the same game as New Donk City, with its realistic trash cans and normally proportioned residents. And while the Cascade Kingdom is home to these cartoonish enemies, they're right around the corner from an almost photo-real T-Rex. What's going on there? Odyssey point-blank refuses to adhere to any one or even two or three visual styles, and that only becomes more pronounced as the game unfolds. It could prove divisive, but for our money, that chaos is a big part of the game's charm. I mean, how do we go this long without a realistically modelled Shiba Inu? Odyssey isn't the first Mario game with an open world, but it's certainly the most open so far, putting a massive emphasis on exploring your environment to root out every last secret. <laughs> to make that easier, you get a fully-fledged map, on which are marked checkpoints, which you unlock by running into them. Once visited, the game lets you zip back to these points on the map whenever you like, so if there's a tricky platforming section to reach a high point on the map, for instance, you don't need to do it more than once. <laughs> This feels like a sensible addition, because it keeps the pace of your exploration clipping along, even if we're a little confused as to where Mario goes exactly when fast travel is activated. Just into the fabric of the universe, I guess? Mario is a man of many looks, but historically, those looks have consisted of basic palette swaps for his iconic get-up, or full-on animal suits, which, based on how much sprinting and jumping is going on, must be about 90% Mario sweat by now. Ew. Odyssey is the first Mario game to really let you go crazy with how your hero looks. Right off the bat, you'll be able to buy different outfits, ranging from appropriate attire for your environment, to whatever the hell is going on here. The sheer variety of hat and costume combos on offer is super impressive, with the suggestion that there are plenty more to unlock even once you've visited every world. The fact that none of them seem to affect gameplay in the slightest is a nice move too, because it means how Mario looks throughout his adventure is entirely up to you. Of course, you might end up seeing <clears throat> more of Mario than you ever thought you would, but at least this expanded wardrobe suggests that Mario's finally ready to move on from dungarees. None of us wanted the 90s to end Mario, but we've all got to move on. For a long time, 120 was the magic number in Mario games, the total amount of stars or shines hidden away for the patient player to collect. The Galaxy games experimented with bumping that number up, with a grand total of 242 up for grabs in Galaxy 2. But Mario Odyssey takes that idea and sprints off with it like an overexcited chain chomp. Moons are absolutely everywhere in this game, with worlds so densely packed with the blasted things, it's a wonder Mario doesn't have to shovel them out of the way just to open the Odyssey's front door. It's too early to say with any certainty how many moons Nintendo has jammed into the game, but based on our playing, think what Mario Galaxy 2 had on offer, then double it, then add a heap more. Can we all intent? Oh, we found Daniel Tess, Randy Carriotta. Yeah! Mario games are the high watermark for video game music. Come on, just groove on this classic for a moment. Nice.
nice. And the music throughout Mario Odyssey certainly hits those highs, with moody tunes that fit the world you're in, and a soaring main theme that makes you want to pack your bags and head for worlds unknown. I mean, as long as your switch is fully charged, obviously, and only if those worlds have Wi-Fi, we're not cavemen. But Odyssey goes a step further music-wise, introducing full-on songs with lyrics sung by an actual person. The most notable example is the criminally catchy Jump Up Superstar, sung by Pauline, the mayor of New Donk City, who's not so busy with her civic duties that she can't belt out perhaps the greatest chorus ever conceived by humans. Jeez, Pauline, save some musical innovation for the next few centuries. There are at least a couple of instances in Mario Odyssey of the music bringing in a lyrical element, which long-term Nintendo aficionados might find a little disorienting, although fans of other series will be keen to point out that some platforming icons have been doing this for years. Mario is probably gaming's most famous character, and his history in the medium is incredibly rich. Mario Odyssey is the first proper Mario game to fully embrace that, and it makes for a game so self-aware it puts Skynet to shame. Consider New Donk City, where the band is playing all the golden oldies, and the citizens are lining up to see this theatre show the classics. Ow, my nostalgia! But our favourite bits are the more subtle environmental touches, like this graffiti, or the billboards that proudly display what is the actual artwork from the very first Donkey Kong arcade cabinet. It's really cool to see this stuff featured, even when it reminds you that Mario wasn't always such an adorable cherub. Jeez, what happened that day, Mario? We're guessing one too many barrels to the head. We're not going to give away all the ways in which Mario Odyssey is in love with its own history, because some of them will be more fun to find for yourself, but there's a wealth of treats buried in here for those who've been following Mario's adventures for a long time. Fun fact, Mario Galaxy 2 came out in 2010, about half a year before Instagram first launched, and oh, how times have changed. Happily, Mario Odyssey is more than ready for the selfie era with an all-new photo mode. What makes this mode impressive is that it can be accessed at more or less any time by pressing down on the D-pad, which means it soon becomes second nature to pause the action when you see something neat and frame up a screenshot. With a bit of fiddling, you can grab some really unusual mementos of your travels, and don't forget to rotate everything sideways once in a while to grab a new background pic for your phone. Hashtag no filter. So those are some of the ways Mario Odyssey breaks new ground for the series, but if all this is sounding a little too different, rest assured that for every tweak, there are a dozen things that haven't changed, from the elaborate precision leaps and focus on hunting out every last collectible, to the fact that even after all these years, the plot is still Peach getting kidnapped. Come on, Nintendo. Peach is awesome. It's time to show her a little more regard. Oh, also Toad is still somehow everywhere? Seriously, Toad, you're slightly taking the shine off my exploration of Uncharted Worlds here. That's all for now, but have you been playing Mario Odyssey? Can you think of any other ways it breaks the Mario mold? Let us know in the comments, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.